When I was born, Bulgaria was behind the Iron Curtain. It was the socialist bloc. So when I mention this to people, they think or they assume that my uh, childhood was very um, unhappy. And also I was reading a lot uh, about this world, world outside. outside and I was getting more and more curious and I wanted to see it and I wanted to experience it. So you were not thinking about working in a bank? That was absolutely not at all even a dream. I just, my dream was to travel. I didn't have any other dreams. Time suddenly was very pressing, you know? I had to, I had to take, uh, decide something. I had to make a change. So when you do such a big change, if you don't have the right financial support, everything else really can be really bad experience. What is the worst that can happen when you take this decision? And if you can live with this, with the worst, then you are ready. No, no two, two people, people have, have the same path, path right? right? If you don't know what you want, you're going to go around in circles. Everybody's thinking, okay, oh, wow, well, you leave the corporate world and suddenly on the other side, oh, it's, it's all roses, the, the grass is greener. It's not. Expect to work hard. It's. Welcome everyone. Today is going to be different. I'm your host. I'm Eric Sim. I was a former banker, same like any. I was in with City, and later on I went to UBS. I write on LinkedIn. I'm also the author of Small Action, and I'm going to interview Annie for a change. Hey, Annie, welcome. And today you are in the guest seat instead of the host seat. I know you have hosted this for the last 28 episodes. And it's also a good change for me because I've been guest for many, many episodes. And then finally, I can see you. Hi, Eric. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to be the host in my podcast. I'm very excited and looking forward for the discussion. Hey, Annie, you were born in Bulgaria and many of us haven't been there before. Can you tell us a bit about Bulgaria and what it was like when you were, when you were young? Oh, great question. And a lot of people ask me that because Bulgaria is a, a small country in Eastern Europe. The population is 7.5 million people and it's, and it's decreasing very fast. When I was born, Bulgaria was behind the Iron Curtain. It was the socialist bloc. So when I mention this to people, they think or they assume that my uh, childhood was very um, unhappy and we were poor and we, we didn't have good time. But actually it's not because, because we were in our little pond over there and we had very little view of what's happening outside. And we were happy with uh, what we were having. And in a sense, this um, isolation, so to say, created or, or nurtured in me interests and qualities that actually after that served me all through my life and career. And also I was reading a lot uh, about this world outside and I was getting more and more curious and I wanted to see it and I wanted to experience it. And places like uh, Singapore and Hong Kong and Macau sounded so mystifying, you know, <laughs> that the sitting now today talking to you and uh, having lived in Singapore, it's, it's an amazing feeling. So all in all, it was, it was really great living there. What do you study in school? I studied... Um, finance. And um, why did I study finance? I, I can't give you an answer. I guess that by that time, it was something that was popular, I guess. I can't even remember what was my thinking. I don't think there was any thinking. I mean, that was like... A so you were not thinking about working in a bank? That was absolutely not at all even a dream. I just... My dream was to travel. I didn't have any other dreams. And working in a bank happened, it happened by chance. So I wanted to travel and I um, started uh, applying for international companies in Bulgaria. But unfortunately, or fortunately, all of them rejected my application. So 
I just had to find a job and there was this open position in a, a local Bulgarian bank and I applied and I had three interviews and they, and they accepted me. And that's how my banking career started. It was not planned. How, how many years do you work there before you uh, left Bulgaria? Before I left Bulgaria. So basically I worked in that first place for a year and a half because I was always on the look of the international institution. So I was thinking, okay, I'm, I have to work something. I start with a bank. I do my best. I learn, but I'm going to look for other opportunities. And the first international bank started. It was a Greek bank, interestingly, now that I live in Greece. And I moved there. And because it was international, that was the first kind of... I was in the team that that started this bank from scratch. So you moved to Greece to work in the bank or you moved to this bank but still stay in Bulgaria? No, oh, no, I still stayed in Bulgaria. I still stayed in Bulgaria. But then you moved, moved to this bank. And I know you have worked in city for like 21 years. It's such a, a fantastic career that you have. How did you get this Citibank job? Because it must be very difficult to get in. It is, um, I mean, it is a bank with good reputation. You won't be the only one who wants to get there. So what makes you special and why did they choose you? At that time when Citibank um, invited me for interviews, I was in Romania. I was working for Raiffeisen Bank. And at that time, that was my first international assignment. And I was so excited. I was in Romania, you know, I was, I was living abroad. That was my dream come true. And then Citibank came and said, well, we are opening Citibank in Bulgaria. And um, I was like thinking, oh God, now I have to go back to Bulgaria. So that was a big dilemma. I was thinking, what am I going to do? But the thing is, it's Citibank, right? You go for interviews there. I was lucky because I I had an operational background. I used to be a SWIFT trainer, so I knew how SWIFT messages go. I I knew the, the Bulgarian payment systems. And that was what actually opened the door because because I remember my first interviews in City was all around that and how if we if City goes there, how what are the systems, how they work. And I remember that some of my interviews were really charting what is the local payment system. So that's how it happened. Beside these hard skills, there must be something about you that they find. Because I, I work in city, we don't just hire people with hard skills. So what is what do you think is special about you? Could be your personality, could be your soft skills. What is it? I think it was about, I mean, I have a, a very good work ethic. So I want to to put 110% in anything I do regardless. So it doesn't matter. I like it. I don't like it. I'm there. I have to do the job and you put the best of you. So I think that's one thing that, um, that my father taught me that you have to always put your best and then let's see how it works. And I generally have interest in people. So I like working with people. I'm curious. So two qualities in combination work very well and they worked very well for me throughout my career. Interested in people and also working hard, working 110%. Was there something else? Was there a, a driving factor for your career, you know, 21 years in city? Sound very strange, but uh, my driving factor for my career, one of the driving factor is to travel. I just had this desire to travel and, and city for me was, you know, you're in this international place and it, city is in 99 countries. That's an opportunity that you can't match anywhere else. And this was one of the driving factors. The other is that I didn't see myself as doing only one thing. I just can't, couldn't imagine myself doing only payments or being only in one narrow area. And um, being in a, such an international organization, I was thinking I have to go around and see how is how the bank works, what happens at different levels and at different departments. And that's what drove me to seek jobs, move, etc. Because I also know that you change uh, roles within city every three to four years. I think that's fantastic. 
how did you go about? Is it somebody asks you to change or you have to plan ahead, you build relationship? What did you do to warrant that? Well, I think that most of the time it was that thing that I had an idea that I want to learn different things. And I was always thinking, okay, the the skills and the knowledge I have at the moment, what are these areas that my skills and knowledge will be helpful? And and this is how I choose my next step, you know, something that I don't know. So, for instance, from um, operations to front office or from um, even I made a change from the front office business role to audit and risk because it was interesting. I wanted to learn about this, although it was very strange career choice. But that's um, as I started building my network, then it was far easier than I, I knew, for instance, if I set my go to let's say move to to asia then i have people who i know there and it's so much easier to look for opportunities when they arise when when you when you know a lot of people yeah which year did you come to singapore i came to singapore in 2011 may 2011 2011 okay that's the year i went to hong kong how many years do you stay in singapore i stayed there till uh end of 2015 so that's, that's a good four years. And before Singapore, where were you? In London. I was in London for five years. Yeah. So was it your first posting in Asia, Singapore posting? That was my first posting in Asia. So how do you add that? Because you were in Bulgaria, then you went to Romania, you went to London. So this is like the Western part. And the first time in Asia, how do you cope with the cultural differences? Very well. I for me for me that's exciting. It's not to learn new culture, and new people, uh, to to see how they live and what drives them. So for me that's interesting. I loved everything about Singapore. I still love it. It's this place in the world that everything works. And um, apart from getting accustomed to the to the heat and the humidity, that was the only thing I had to get accustomed to. The rest was really. Um, positive experience. I, I didn't have any negative. So for the listener out there, um, not everybody is so fortunate or given the chance or they are still thinking. What, what do you think are the benefits of having an international career? Well, the benefits are so many, but, but let me focus on two or three of them. So the first thing is that if you choose an international career, that means that you are going to work for international company. So that gives you an opportunity and um, to tap into an international job market instead of being into only your country. And it's limiting in a sense, right? You have this, all these other options in front of you. So in terms of career advancement, it's invaluable uh, because you have so many more options uh, to choose from. It is extremely culturally enriching you know because you see all these um, different cultures people were raised in a completely different way doing the same thing but differently and they apply a different thinking to one and the same problem and that's really really enriching and it makes you culturally competent so broadens your world view and in the future it is that much more easy to work internationally, to work with people because you understand it, right? You understand how they think and you know how to answer to their needs and to, to talk to them, etc. And I think this is, first of all, the process of learning this is very exciting for me and it's so interesting to, to discover all these things. And second of all, it only gives you opportunities. And because as a woman, sometimes you have a family to take care of. When you move, your family has to move with you. Any of those challenges that you face moving so many countries and your family has to change uh, the environment and also make new friends? I think my family is nomad family. I was, I'm very lucky because my husband doesn't have an office job that that has to keep him in a particular country in particular building so so he would um, follow me wherever i go 
um so he was he was working mainly from home and he was he was the one that spent more time with the kids so to say well the kids were the same they never had any problem moving i, I have an international career as well so i enjoy making uh, new friends and also new connection and then you can bring back the experience uh, back home and add more value to your home uh, country so totally uh, with you on that and so after 21 years in city you were coo chief operating officer for one of the big division why do you leave such a senior job people must be asking you that's the one question everybody asked me okay let me go back with time when i had my kids um, in 2010, I was thinking, okay, one day I will spend more time with them. And then I w we went to Singapore, then to Hong Kong. And then I suddenly realized um, when they turned nine, I was thinking, okay, when is this one day? And I mean, they're nine, they'll be 10, 11, 12, and that's it. After that, they'll just go have their life, right? And I was like, time suddenly was very pressing, you know, I had to, I had to take, uh, decide something, I had to make a change. And that was one of the things, right? But there are many others because as, as I said, I'm, I'm curious. And I, when I moved to Hong Kong, I started doing different things, uh, connecting with a lot of different people for different industries. And suddenly my horizons were broadened. I was outside. I started having a lot of interest outside of banking and all these things came together. And um, I said, okay, it's the time now. And for uh, looking from outside, you would think, oh, I, I thought about this overnight and I did it. No, it was a long process of, of thinking about, you know, how to spend more time with kids, uh, where to live, is it the right time to leave, et cetera, et cetera. But with an extremely fulfilling job, the, the CEO job was extremely interesting. It was difficult to, to match it, you know, at that point of time. And I said, okay, that's it. I think all the stars are aligned. This is the right time. Is, is there like a, a time that you start preparing much more? Is it like 18 months before or 12 months before? It's, it was around 18 months before because it started with uh, us thinking, okay, if we have to leave, where are we going to go? And that was a decision because it has to um, it has to be okay for everybody then when we go there where are we going to live right so that's another thing to take care of where the kids going to school so that has to be arranged then then finances right i mean i'm not going to work anymore i mean not going to work a, a job that brings every month a certain income and i was planning anyways that i would do something but i was not clear very much what i'm going to do and i had a, a we had to create a, a financial cushion that will what will support us through this year but actually our life was very much into saving investing so we can one day can take this decision easily without uh, without worry about money because when you do such a big change if you don't have the right financial support everything else really can be really bad experience yeah you become very stressful yeah very stressful worrying about money and then of course you can enjoy the space and all but if money is at the back of your mind it will take all the fun away Exactly, exactly. So, so that's very, very important. So I can't stress more to anybody. For the listener who may not know your career path, your last job with City was based in Hong Kong. Yes. And then when you decided to leave Citibank, you moved to Greece. Okay, why, why Greece? Why Greece? Um, because it's, first of all, Greece is an amazing place to live great place to live a lot of people connect it only with vacations but it's actually a very nice great climate great food great people very close to bulgaria because i'm bulgarian right so i can go uh, often there has international schools uh, quality of life is great we did think of other options but none of the other options were giving us all these positives that we have in Greece. So what are the steps for people who are considering leaving a, a good job? What are the steps uh, that you can advise them? So on the preparation, I think I mentioned some of the things that you have to plan 
you know, financially, how are you going to support, where are you going to live, how is your family going to also integrate, what are they going to do? Also, it's uh, it's very important to know why you're doing it because it's not like you wake up, oh, I'm just, I'm so bored of this job. That's not, that's not enough. You have to find out why exactly. And you have to look for opportunities and, and know. For what hap- helped me a lot is like, I was thinking, okay, I'm living in the moment where, I mean, I have a great job, very well paid, I'm respected, etc. And I was thinking, what is going to happen after that? So that's very important to actually realize what is the worst that can happen when you take this decision. And if you can live with this, with the worst, then you are ready. If you can't, then you don't make the, the, the change. So once you make the change, it's very important to, to continue keeping your network and expanding your network in the areas you want to develop. So for instance, I wanted to do, um, I wanted to teach, be in training, education. I wanted to coach. I wanted to, in, um, you know, do a startup or invest in a startup. So obviously I started increasing my uh, network in that areas. It's very important to speak with somebody who has done such change. And this is how I found you, Eric. And um, and we spoke and then I got the, know, the know-how from you and I applied it in my way because no two people have the same path, right? So when you speak with somebody who've done it, you understand the pitfalls and what you should think about and what you should prepare for. I, I started being much more active on social networks because this is the way to, to, to actually, f- your future clients are there. So I think these are the most important things um, to consider. So what is like the one thing that after speaking with me, then you realize that it's very important and then you take action to do that? The one thing was the importance of, of your brand and the way you project yourself, the importance of social media in a positive, in the positive way, and how much you can gain for sharing your experience with others. So online presence. Online presence, uh, yeah. Just the moment you you left city, you no longer have a brand yeah. to rely on. Exactly. Right? If this is like your ex ex employer, you can no longer keep saying. Uh, I work for City. You now you have to work for yourself and you are the brand. That's why it's so important. I am so glad that you are able to build your online presence within such a short time. And you have been very successful. I know one of your posts that you talk about security guard at Citibank Tower and that post gone uh, viral. You have gone and give a voice to the security guard who has worked there for many years. How many years have you uh, known this security guard for the three years i was um, last in hong kong this guy was working there every day meeting the people coming in the in the building with a smile and that really impressed me from because you know you meet him the first time and okay today he's smiling the next day he's smiling the next week the next month and you're thinking my goodness this guy is amazing he's always like positive how is he doing it <laughs> So if there's one, if you have to do it again, what is the one thing that you would do it differently? Okay, so if I have to do it again, I am going to develop at least one of my income streams a bit early, right? I could have done coaching before even leaving city. I could have done some, some time of training and education before. So that, and also building my um, online presence better so these three things i would have done if you have the freedom to to not worry about finances for a year then you can be a bit more relaxed but but i would suggest right even you are financially secure you are financially independent still try to do it because online presence takes time so a lot of people uh, make a mistake they think that okay i'm going to wait until i retire or i leave then I'm going to take three months of holiday. After that, come back. I start doing my LinkedIn. I start looking for jobs. I can tell you when you no longer have the brand, it is much more difficult. Now you are like a nobody to start with. You want to teach again, 
you are an ex-employee, why should the university go for you? So, any I think you brought up a great point. For those people who want to leave their day job, prepare early. Make your first dollar if you can, so you can experience whether your skill uh, is worth um, is worth it and people are willing to pay. And your online presence is going to take 18 months. So, and then you don't need to be writing every day. So you can still do it over the weekend and build your network, build your network beyond your current network. So a lot of time, people just stick around with their own industry people and same department. And then when they leave their company, they suddenly don't have uh, new people, you know, and the circle is so small. So that's a very good advice um, for, for those. And now tell us about your portfolio career because traditionally everybody has like one job, they work until they retire, but now you have developed a portfolio career. Just now you talk about uh, teaching in the university. I know you are involved in the MBA program. You are coaching uh, some professionals. Uh, what else do you do? So, okay, first of all, tell us what's inside your portfolio career. Okay, so my portfolio career consists of five things. So the first thing is um, I represent the Northern Illinois University in Europe, Eastern Europe. And uh, at the moment, uh, we, uh, we have our first executive MBA in Bulgaria. So that, that's an opportunity for anyone in Eastern Europe and in Bulgaria to, to earn an American, accredited American diploma. But in Bulgaria, you don't need to travel to the States. Um, you pay less, you pay local price. So that's one. The second one is I, um, I told you I wanted to see what is the entrepreneur part of it. Um, and I decided to invest into a startup. And um, this is a, a Swiss startup creating um, AI solution for forklifts. So the forklifts can be operated from anywhere in the world because the because it's very difficult nowadays to find uh, forklift drivers for big warehouses and that's a, a great solution and it was extremely interesting i'm in the board there and it's very very exciting um i coach i coach um, um senior senior and mid career professionals um, on different topics on how to get unstuck in their career I have been doing a lot of uh, interview preparations actually recently because I've been interviewed so many times and I interviewed so many people. So coaching is one thing. I do my podcast because when I left, as you said, a lot of people was asking me, how is it, how, how is it possible? So I said, okay, let me do this. Let me spread the news and invite people who have done this and I can share with uh, with the listeners. I write on LinkedIn, I um, write articles, um, I speak, I advise um, companies on change. These are the things I do and um, portfolio career is really suited for my temperament and and curiosity and um, So what is the difference now experiencing portfolio career for what, almost two years now? Yeah, almost two years. So compared to when you were in banking, this two live, right? Can you tell us the key differences? They're just uh, very, very different. Let me tell you the one thing that is common is working hard because nothing good in this world happens without work. <laughs> no. The, the biggest difference is that you're in control of your time. You're more in control of your time. And that's what basically was my goal. I wanted to be able to say, okay, now my kids are coming from home. I'm going to stop for two hours and I'm going to spend with them. We're going on vacation. Okay, we get up and go. That's, that's what is in, invaluable. And the other difference is you are, depending on yourself, you take the decisions and you have the chance to choose what you work, who you work with, and on what you work with. And that's that makes your job 80 to 90% um, what you want. And they're very small percentage of, you know, things that you can't avoid. Well, you don't have this in the corporate world. So these are, these are the main differences for me. And before we go, what are the key takeaways uh, for listener who is also thinking of developing a portfolio career? So I think that, Three things. The first 
you have to be curious and so you kind of develop interest so you can have a portfolio career because portfolio means support several things that bring um, bring income even some things that don't bring income because you want to do them the second thing is that you have to be aware of yourself and know what you want because if you don't know what you want you're going to go around in circles and you're not going to achieve um, a lot. And the third one is when you have found the area you want to develop, you know, when you have done a plan, you've done your own research, you have to act. You just don't waste time, you act. Because sitting around waiting for things to happen is not a great um, strategy. Expect to work hard. It's Everybody's thinking, okay, oh, well, you leave the corporate world and suddenly on the other side, oh, it's, it's all roses, the, the grass is greener. It's not. There you go. So take action now. Uh, be curious, be curious about people, be curious about things and know what you want. So these are the three key takeaways. Annie, it's been a pleasure hosting this and uh, getting your, your answer and also your advice for the listener out there. Hope to do this again. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Eric. It was great uh, talking to you. You're a great host, by the way. And absolutely, <laughs> I hope to do this again. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. Please remember to review, rate and subscribe when you have a chance. You can do that on your favorite podcast platform or go to our site, changeispossible.site. Thank you once again and have a great day.